father passed away a very short time after that, returning his soul to its maker. And when I read the story, it reminded me a story that I heard Mamish from the Baal HaMaisa. Shared this with me, he heard it directly. Directly, it's not Clay Revi, Clay Chamishi, Clay Shvi, like many stories. It's Mamish Clay Rishon. Clay Rishon is Mavashal. <laughs> Clay Rishon cooks according to everybody. So here's the Maisa. You told it to me. His name was, he passed away not long ago. His name was Reb David Edelman. David Edelman was a Jew who lived in Springfield, Massachusetts for many, many years. Just passed away last year, a few months ago. He was a bentishim. He was 90 years old. And he was sent to Springfield by the Baal HaIlula, by the Baal Yard site of Yutzvat to open up a school there, Jewish school. And he led the school till his passing last year for more than 50 years. Almost 60 years he led a school through thick and thin. Thousands of Jewish children came through that school. I knew him. So Eid Aliyid. This is Jacobson. I'll tell you a Misa that I experienced. It was 1943. Around 1943, the early 40s. He was learning in the Lubavitch Yeshiva in Taim Chitmimim on 770 Eastern Parkway where Rav Gustman, Zechari Levrocha, became a Rosh Yeshiva I mentioned earlier. But this was before. He says it was uh, afternoon break. You know, the afternoon break, the lunch break. Bein Dorim between this Dorim. He says, me and my chavrus and me and my buddy, whose name was a Jew, whose name was Herschel Fogelman. Rabbi Yehuda Tzvi Fogelman, who was sent to Worcester, Massachusetts, where he led a school for almost 60 years, also passed away a year or two ago. Also 90, I think. Rabbi Herschel Fogelman. So we were out there, outside of the Zal of the Beis Medrash, standing by the elevator, and what they call in yeshivish the slogans, shoving the bull. I don't know how they say it today. What is it today? Shmoozing. Probably if it was 43, they were also smoking a cigarette. I can imagine. That he didn't tell me. But they were just schmoozing about what two yeshiva boys schmooze three o'clock in the afternoon in the hall of yeshiva. What do yeshiva boys talk about three o'clock in the afternoon in the halls of yeshiva? Any yeshiva bachem want to tell us? Huh? You talk about Torah. Psst. Okay. I see somebody trained you well. You even know what to answer. Very good. Okay. But Rabbi Edelman said we weren't schmoozing. We were just schmoozing. Two boys schmoozing. If you know the building of 770 Eastern Parkway, there's an elevator there. The Rebbe used to give dollars there. And from there you go into a hallway where you can go into the Lubavitch Rebbe's office where he used to work. Or you go upstairs where his father-in-law lived. The Rebbe Rayats lived till his passing in 1950. And then his wife lived there till her passing in 1971. She says, we're standing by the elevator and the door opens up. And who comes out? The Ramash. The Ramash was the acronym, is the acronym of Reb Menachem Shneerson, which was the title that Hasidim used to refer to him during the lifetime of his father-in-law. He was a son-in-law. He married his middle daughter. So he was called the Ramash. Later, he, of course, succeeded his father-in-law as the Rebbe, the seventh Lubavitcher Rebbe. Then he was called the Ramash in a respectful acronym. So it tells me, Rabbi Edelman says, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchuk, he says, the Ramash comes out from the door and he passes by. So he stops in front of me and Fogelman. And he says, Bachrim, Evilt Heren, a Frischen Wart, from the Mreb and the Do you want to hear a fresh Wart, a new Let's say right out of right hot out of the oven, a fridge of art, a new fresh insight that I just heard from my father-in-law, from the Rebbe, from the Rebbe Rayat. You don't resist such an offer. Say Avada, of course. So this is what the Rebbe tells them, and I have to tell you, it astounded me personally. You'll soon see why. The Rebbe says, the Ramash says to them, let me tell you what he just the Rebbe just told me. He says, you know. Sometimes people walk into shul and they're not showing the Torah mitzvah. They don't observe Torah mitzvahs. Some of them came from the old home 
some of them were born here. But whatever the situation is, they don't practice any more Jewish life. You know my minhik, you know my custom is, I'm always very, very warm to them. I'm inviting, I'm welcoming, and I always speak to them with grace. I always try to be kind and embrace them. There were older Hasidim, Chabad Hasidim, who came to me and said, the first is richtig. This is not appropriate behavior. By you being warm and kind to them, you're giving a hechsher. You're legitimizing in their mind what they're doing. You have to be harsh. You have to rebuke them. You have to tell them the truth about how terrible it is what they're doing. You're so warm and cozy and kind. You have a nice word for them. And they go home feeling good about themselves. You have an ability to protest. And the Ramash tells the two Bachrim Lach, he says, listen to this. He says, and I didn't know if I'm right or maybe I'm wrong. I felt that this is a much more effective way of bringing them back to Torah. I felt it's essentially the appropriate way, but I thought maybe the older Hasidim are right. Maybe my judgment is clouded and maybe I shouldn't behave this way. I had a question. So what did I do? So I just went in a few minutes ago to the Rebbe, to my father-in-law, and I told him the story and I shared with him my dilemma. I asked the Rebbe to tell me who's right. <laughs> Should I change my behavior or not? He looks at the boys and he says, and this is what the Rebbe me gesagt. And this is what the Rebbe told me. The Eberstadt b'shafen aven atate on amame haben akind. Hashem created the world when a father and mother give birth to a child. Haben ze lib dem kind mit den ganzen Herzen. They love the child with all their heart. And if you ask the mother and father, can you love them? How much do you love them? How much? And the answer is, umba grenitz. That's what he said. Umba grenitz. You know what umba grenitz means? Huh? Limitless. A limitless love. The love has no boundaries. It doesn't stop. The love doesn't go from here to China. The love extends infinitely. So there's no space for more love if the love fills your whole heart and beyond. That's it. That man, Avin der Eberste bench mit noch a kind, haben sie dem kind euch lieb, um bagrenitz to hate. Hashem blesses them with another child. They love this child also oh infinitely. And so with every child, somehow the magic is recreated again and again and again. Each child they love without limits, without bounds. We're talking, of course, about functional, healthy, wholesome parents. And then the Rebbe Rayat says, Abba Sadah Amal was a Habba Nakind. When the kind loyaleinu v'loyaleinu, loyaleinu v'loyaleichem. Hatach is sudden in the goof. Sometimes a child is born, a child is born with a terrible deficit in the body, with a disability, crippled, disabled. Sometimes, he said, se felt an aver. God forbid a part of the body, a limb is missing, an organ is missing, or there's a defect in the body. It could be in the heart, could be in the arms, could be in the legs, there's an impediment. Says the parents look at this child. Und zu dem Kind haben sie an eigenartige Lippschaft. You hear the Yiddish? For this child, they find a unique eigenartic. No, translate. Unparalleled, something special, a unique love. Huh? Exclusively unique. Ah, he's even shingahat an umba granits to love to the under the kinder. 
They love the other kids infinitely. That's true. But this child, because he or she is missing something and missing something significantly, their heart goes out to this child. And there's a special sensitivity, love, compassion, affection, and attention given to this child. And then the Rebbe continues. And then the Rebbe continues. Hashem loves every Jew like his own child. The love is infinite, it's absolute, it's unequivocal, it's non-negotiable, it's unconditional and it has no limits. He sees a Jew that there's something missing. The Rebbe says, Ayid was like Nishkin Tfilin. Felt up is in the hand, in the arm. A Jew who doesn't put on Tfilin, there is a defect in the spiritual arm, in the spiritual soul, in the arm of this Jew. Ayid was get Nishkin's docket, there's a defect in the hand. Ayid was like Nishkin Taira, there's something in the mind, in the mind of the Jew that's lacking. And he went through. Ayid was hitnish tarasa mishpacha. Ayid was hitnish mikveh. Another element of the body that's spiritually affected. Ayid was leifnish tana mitzvah. There's something missing in the leg. Says the rebish te gita kuka fakind un sefeltapas. Something is missing. Un sudem yid. Hotter an egin artike lipshaft. He possesses such a deep love special special love because there's something missing his heart goes out the Rebbe looked at his son-in-law and he said and I want you to behave just like God I want you to behave just like Hashem this is what the Rebbe told these two boys in 1943 and I had the privilege of hearing it from one of them, Rabdavid Ailman. 